What's up guys, I'm Ethan Carter and today I'm going to show you how I made this leather travel valet tray with a chevron pattern bottom. Let's get to it. The trickiest part of this project is going to be the valet tray chevron pattern bottom, so let's start with that. You can see by the template it will be 4.5 by 4.5 inches. But to make sure we have enough material to work with, I cut out the canvas backing larger at 6 by 6 inches. For the pattern to work, we need two contrasting color leathers. The thickness of the leather doesn't really matter as long as they are both the same thickness. I'm using 3 ounce leather. For this project, I decided to make the chevron pattern with half inch strips of leather. To make the strips, I simply laid out the 6x6 pieces of leather on my cutting mat and cut out 12 strips of each color. Now I know what you're thinking, if the canvas is 6 inches and you're using two pieces of leather, don't you just need 6 half inch strips of each? Well, for the chevron pattern to work, we need leather strips on both sides of the canvas, so 6 of each color on both sides. More on the need for that later. Once all the strips were cut, I used some Tandy Leathers Eco Weld Adhesive to glue the strips to the canvas. Eco Weld is super easy to use. You simply apply some to the canvas and each strip, wait for it to get tacky, and then stick them together. To make the panel, I started at one edge of the canvas and then worked my way down alternating strip by strip, being careful to make sure that each strip's edge was butted up as close as possible to the strip before. Once the first side was all glued in place, I flipped it over and did the same thing on the other side. For the pattern to work, we need the same color strip mirrored on each side, so I was careful to make sure I started with the same color strip. This next step is what makes the whole thing work, cutting new strips at a 45 degree angle. The cutting pad I use has a 45 degree angle layout on it, which makes this super easy. I started by making a 45 degree cut down the center of the panel. Then I simply used that new edge as the straight edge reference for cutting all the strips. I lined up the edge against one of the grid lines, used my rotary cutter to cut a half inch strip, Move the new edge over to the grid line and cut another half inch strip. I continued this until I had cut as many strips as possible. Now we get to the chevron pattern. The way you get the chevron pattern is by flipping every other strip upside down. This makes the diamond shape slant the other direction from the strip before it. The alternating diamonds, when lined up correctly, make the famous chevron pattern. With the layout all figured out, I again used some EcoWeld to glue the new pattern to another piece of canvas backing. Then I grabbed the template again to make sure I had enough real estate to cut the 4.5 by 4.5 inch bottom. Then I marked the cut lines with my scratch awl and cut it down to size with my rotary cutter. And with that, the bottom was done. Next, I moved on to making the valet tray the bottom will be attached to. Using the template, I cut an 8x8 inch piece of leather and then used my scratch owl to mark the corner holes where I will attach the snaps. Then, using my hole punch, I punched all the corner snap holes. For the snaps, I used Tandy Leather's snap setter set and their four piece snaps. Each corner has one snap set, and I just followed the instructions that came with the set to attach them to the leather. As you can see, the spacing I have in the template allows each corner to be pinched together and then held in place with a perfectly aligned snap set. Next, I moved on to attaching the chevron base to the valet tray. I started by again using some EcoWeld to glue the bottom to the center of the flesh side of the valet tray. To be honest, this would probably be a strong enough bond, but I decided to add some stitching to reinforce it. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me stitching this specific bottom, so I'm going to substitute in another valet tray I made just for the stitching section, but the process is the exact same. I started by using my wing dividers to score a stitch line. Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. To ensure the spacing between each hole stays consistent as I work my way down the line, I always make sure to place the stitching chisel point furthest to the left in the last hole of the previous set of holes I punched. With 
With the stitching holes punched around the whole bottom, I moved on to the stitching. I made a video dedicated to leather stitching where I go in depth into the process of how I do this saddle stitch and others, and I'll leave a link above for you to check it out if you want. But at a high level, what I found is easiest is to just pick a sequence and stick to that. For example, I always start by using the right needle to stitch from the back, and then stitch the left needle from the front into the same hole but in front and under the right needle's thread. If you continue this sequence, you'll get a very nice looking stitch pattern in my experience. And with all the stitching done, this valet tray is good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram, and I would love to have you follow me there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.